Hello and welcome to yet another Nuclear Craft update video. I'm recording this one straight off the last one. This is now version 2.14 that we're doing, uh, all the 2.14 versions. Uh, and this one's actually a pretty short one, and uh, it's pretty much all going to be self-contained in this little area we have here, this little workshop uh, on the side of this beautiful desert that we uh, that we work in. Um, the first thing that's been added, or the first thing that changed, was the speed and energy upgrade rules. So do you remember the old speed and energy upgrades were really weird? Like, uh, the speed upgrades went to sort of 1, 6, 10, 15 times, like in the sort of triangle numbers. Well, uh, that's been changed now to just, uh, in, by default, uh, you can change it in the configs to be other power laws and so forth. Uh, so just be like normal power laws. So, if you look at speed upgrades, um, it goes up uh, quadratically, um, and the energy upgrades go up linearly, just like before. But now the speed upgrades just follow the square numbers. So, for example, the speed upgrade goes to... Uh, uh, times 4 in the power multipliers, uh, then times 9 power multiplier, then times 16 and so forth, while the speed multiplier goes up linearly, just 1, 2, 3, 4, and the energy upgrades will uh, bring that down uh, by the uh, same amount. So this will bring it down by 2, factor of 2, this will bring it down by a factor of 3, by a factor of 4, and uh, now it's down back to uh, four times which matches the speed multiplier and of course as usual speed upgrades if you add any more than the energy upgrades if you add any more energy upgrades than there are speed upgrades they just won't do anything so uh, past three there won't do anything if i add those five and add those five then it will go to five uh, go to six and six so the power laws are a bit easy to follow now no more weird sort of numbers in here um so yep that's one thing um, isn't that so exciting why is that at the top of my list how boring is that um next thing is a cheap radiation badge, so a slightly more um, sort of low-tech uh, radiation meter is the radiation badge. You could use this in packs, for example, make the guy counter a bit more expensive. Um, basically, the way it works is that it informs the player of how irradiated they are, um, or how irradiated they have been, uh, every 25 rads up to a maximum of 250 rads. So if I take this out of the crafting table and put it into my inventory, it will start to tick down. Um, and basically, every once in a while, it will tell me, you've been irradiated by 25 rads ever since wearing this thing. So, for example, if I take off all of this, um, actually, I'm now being poisoned by this uh, by this stuff. I was about to get to that uh, later, but never mind, that's happened now. But hopefully, if I get a bit more irradiation going by getting some more of this stuff, perhaps, um, let's put a load of that in my inventory, then hopefully, we will see my uh, radiation badge telling me that I'll be... I'm being heavily irradiated. There we go. Your radiation badge has been exposed to 25 rads. And it will tick down every 25 until it breaks, pretty much. So that's the radiation badge. Uh, there is now bauble support for both the um, Geiger counter and the radiation badge. So you can put them in the bauble slots. Um, I don't want to do that now and go into survival mode because I'll probably be damaged by this horrible poison effect that I've just now subjected myself to. Oh no, it looks like it went away. Ah, because I'm wearing my hazmat suit. Um, the hazmat suit now protects you from uh, IC2 radiation. Um, so, IC2 radiation used to not work quite very well with the nuclear craft hazmat suit, uh, and now, uh, luckily, IC2 added um, some new stuff to its API to allow you to make certain armor sets um, work like a IC2 hazmat set, which is fantastic. So now, if you wear the NC hazmat, it will uh, do the job, which is fantastic. Um, do I even have baubles? It doesn't look like I do, but if I did have baubles, then the Gaia counter and the radiation badge would be uh, able to go in the slots. And in fact, I think the uh, radiation badge won't even tick down until you put it into the ball slot. So that's another thing to watch out for. Um, so there we go, that's that. I also just missed out on the list there, um, skipped over it by accident in that confusion. Uh, the IC2 nuclear reactor, when it's running, now produces NC radiation, a little bit of NC radiation. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it here tick up because it might be too small an amount. If you uh, go into a new world where there's no radiation and turn this thing on, um, you will see that it's producing NC radiation. So if you're into uh, IC2 reactors and you thought you could get away with uh, nuclear craft radiation uh, in this thing, unlucky. It doesn't happen anymore. Next thing on my list, uh, JI support for active cooling. So yes, if you go into here um, and press use, you will see all of the active cooling rates. So uh, basically that 10 out of 10 millibuckets is actually just the millibuckets per tick that the uh, active cooler uses. Uh, the fission cooling rate is 150 heat per tick for water, 3,200 for redstone, etc, etc. Incredibly overpowered and rubbish. Um, and the base cooling rate for fusion is a bit different. Obviously, it's in Kelvin rather than sort of heat units. Uh, so it will tell you all them. You don't have to do any more funny dividing by zero maths when you're working out how much cooling it's going to do. It just tells you here, which is quite nice. Um, there's also JEI support for the uh, collectors. So if I look in here, you'll see that I've now got... Uh, it tells you how much... Uh, uh, helium it will produce so this is in uh, per second I think actually here so basically just says that the compact produces you know eight times as much as the normal 
it basically does just tell you in the uh, in the uh, description that it makes five millipockets per tick, but you know, never mind. It's there just if you want to know how to get nitrogen and uh, and heat li and helium. So the reason I added this, yes, now that I remember, is because it was kind of difficult before if you didn't hadn't played nuclear craft before how to get nitrogen. Because uh, if you actually look at the recipe for nitrogen, it doesn't really say. Um, but once this recipe is now there, it now tells you, oh, I need the nitrogen collector, and then you build it, and then you know it makes it all just easier for a new player. So that's why that recipe's there. It's not really very useful if you're used to what the nitrogen collector does already, but it's there for new players. Um, okay, so that's that. Uh, next thing on the list is added four more quad schmingots. Yes, that's very important, of course. Uh, we need our schmingots. Um, so if you take two more double schmingots and uh, put a little bit of chocolate and marshmallow between them, you get yourself a four more quad schmingot, um, which is uh, probably not recommended by uh, your dentist, but you know, it's Minecraft, you can have as many as you want. And of course they do a fantastic job of uh, keeping you saturated and in good shape. So that's the four more quad schmingot. Um, very good fun. And the final thing on my list here is added a config to customize radiation induced potion effects. Well, isn't that just really exciting? Um, so yes, thank you very much for watching. Um, and I will see you in the next update video, which is going to be 2.15. See you then.